But I do want to go ahead and play uh, uh, another segment of the uh, Ron Brandt video uh, demonstration of the Permag motor that he had. Uh, there, I don't know how many uh, how many of our viewers are familiar with uh, some of these magnet motors and so forth uh, out there? Some of them are very, very efficient. Uh, I'm quite familiar with a lot of motors, particularly DC pulse motors. And um, uh, when I saw this video the first time, uh, Ron is basically um, has a lot of really great little tidbits in here uh, about his about his motor that uh, are really pretty awesome uh, when you sit down and think about the engineering of how these motors work. So um, anyway, um, oh, now my other computer's going off. Okay, anyway, the uh, uh, this is a, a second installment here and let's play it. Hopefully it'll come off a little better this, this week than last. So we'll try it out and uh, hope for the best here. Here we go. find a quiet speed so we can talk um, but I designed this basically for electric cars because of the torque the torque is unlimited in instantaneous torque it's there uh, I have run it long term uh, for heating tests I had a party that uh, said, oh, if you put the power into that seal, see, it's sealed, airtight, no dust, no magnetic filings, nothing can get in there. And uh, I didn't have the shroud on it, and I didn't have a fan on it. I run it without any cooling, with 2,100 watts going in for four hours, and it was still cold. It, do, it does not heat. But it looks nice with the cover on there, and it keeps something from bumping my Holofex switches on the back that uh, control this. In the finished product, it would be built a little bit neater than that. As I say, this is a first-time prototype. I have the designs over here for a 50 and 100 horse motor that will be 13 inches in diameter and 5 inches thick. On a 50, on a 100 horse, it'll be 10 inches thick and still 13 inches in diameter. Here's, here's a uh, picture of the stator. you notice there's a very small amount of iron. I keep the iron to a minimum because two reasons. I've done extensive research on the saturation time of iron and how fast it will give me back the energy that I pushed into it. So the less iron I can use and still have the iron, to get high torque you have to have some iron. Uh, an ironless motor, I've got ironless motors at home have no iron at all. They run beautifully, they're very efficient, and they, uh, but they're not a high torque motor. They're like uh, third horse, uh, quarter horse, and they, they will work very nicely at that rate. But if I tried to go to a car motor, I have to have some iron to get the torque. And to increase the speed, I reduce the iron to the minimum so that I don't waste energy. Anytime that you're going to shove energy into a piece of iron and you have to put more energy in it than is necessary, you're wasting something. And the other thing that I looked at in working in the Navy with submarines and, and uh, all the different uh, types of electronics, some of it was secret at the time, any time that you can take uh, X number of watts and make it do two jobs for you at the same time, getting from point A to point Z uh, and it does two jobs on its way there you're coming out ahead but if it only the, you take so much and do one job and then you take so much more and do another job when you can make the same same supposed electrons do double work at the same time 
So that's why I tried to uh, make as efficient as possible, get the mileage on electric cars up to 200 miles. I don't know how many people here that have contemplated buying electric cars, but the people that I've talked to say that uh, if they had a trustworthy 200 mile range, they would think very seriously about it. I honestly think that uh, we can give them two to 400 miles on a battery charge, depending on the types of batteries. We have many different types of batteries coming on the market. I'm working with just this conventional lead acid deep cycle batteries. And I think that we can get 200 plus. Uh, there's a couple of innovations in this. The next one will be more efficient than this one. The next, next one a build. The, uh, the 50 horse there is designed for very simple construction. If I want a 100 horse, I take the same stator wound left hand and it goes in the same motor. All the parts are universally designed so that I can have a 50, I can have a 100, or I can go to a 200 using the same stator plate. I don't have to make a multitude of different sizes like this design here. Uh, I can wind this to get 10 horsepower. But if you want a horse and a half, why, boy, we can make it super efficient at a horse and a half, same size frame and everything. And it's not any bigger, not, and it's not as heavy as a conventional horse and a half if you went and bought one. So we don't have to have so many different models <coughs> having every one of them different. And uh, as I hate to see waste, and when I can, I have rewound this motor uh, at least a dozen times to do tests to see, like I can wind it for 12 volts and it'll turn 6,000 RPM on 12 volts. If I put 24 volts on it with the same winding, it'll turn 10,000. And I have run it over 12 several times. The RPM, the way it's designed, it's not going to fly apart. Uh, I took it to Portland, and put it on a dynamometer, and I got up to 3,500 RPM. And I'm going to kick it up a little higher. Oh, no, no, it'll blow up, it'll blow up. And I says, I've turned it 10,000. It ain't going to blow up. I finally found out that he, his dynamometer would have blowed up. Uh, he, he didn't want me to turn my motor any faster, but I knew that 10,000 wasn't going to hurt it. And uh, so then he conceded that he didn't want to blow up the, the dynamometer. But uh, it, uh, the horsepower rating goes up uh, very fast when you start getting into the higher RPMs. The uh, uh, low RPM motor is is a energy hog in that uh, when we're designing for efficiency it's awfully hard to get a, to get the efficiency that we can get if we go to higher rpm it's awfully hard to get efficiency if we don't go to high frequency now what i would like to do with this design is i'll go to uh, 3000 kilocycles See, I'm running to 1,500 kilocycles now. I'd like to go to 3,000 or somewhere between 3,000 and 50,000, maybe even 60,000 kilocycles because my recovered power will increase. My efficiency level increase. I went up to, to uh, 20,000 and it increased it, but I blowed out transistors. They said they were rated at 20,000 so I, I'm going to run them up to rating. Well, I found out that they don't perform so well where they rated them. They rated them at the blowout point. And so I had to drop it back down to 15 kilocycles to get the longevity. But we have now, I designed this three years ago. We have now MOSFETs, high amperage MOSFETs, that will go to one megacycle. And there is what I'm going to do in my next controllers is use MOSFETs uh, two to three hundred amp MOSFETs that will go up to a megacycle 
then I can play with the efficiency range to get it right on the 100% mark. I don't want to go over 100% because it seems like people have an aversion to anything being over 100%, so we're going we're gonna to make it 100%. And if we, uh, we've got here, now this is the, this is the statter plate like I was showing you here, only this is the 49 slot. And the iron, where in that one, I had the iron coming into here. I cut back on the iron because I found out I didn't need quite so much. I could get by with less iron between here and here and still had stability. Uh, on the, uh, I think we've got a cross section there of this motor and uh, also one of the 50 horse. Now that's a cross section there of this motor here. Uh, there we go, right, George? Now, something that a lot of people don't know. I, I spent a, a considerable amount of time building eclinators. I invested $20,000 into John Eklund's, uh, I called it his folly. It was his dream. And uh, John Eklund was a brilliant man. He was a theorist. He never built the motor. We built it. It did not function quite like he thought it would. And uh, I give him credit for being a, a good, sincere person but he never built one that worked. And there was a lot of us, not only me, but a number of other people put a lot of money into eclinators. But I went a little farther. I got Hall Effect switches, I got uh, 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 XY recorders, and I plotted the magnetic fields in the iron. What happens when this charge goes in? What happens when the power comes off? And we made charts and more charts and we found out that the magnetic field doesn't quite behave like everybody thought it did. Depending on the kind of iron you use, you can alter the behavior of it. We found that we could bounce magnetic fields off of magnetic fields and they would expand and contract this way at the same time. And so we learned a little bit from it. So I, I don't dislike... Uh, the gentleman that was working with me, he says, we wasted a lot of money. And I said, well, look at it another way. If we went to college for eight years and, and paid the tuition and everything to learn these things, we would have wasted a whole lot more. So we we're paying for our education. And we're learning the hard way, but we learned. And uh, the uh, this is an eclinator here, uh, one that uh, we had running under its own power and by the rules of engagement so to speak uh, if you drop the windage and you drop the bearing drag and everything it was over efficient but when I put a battery charger on it to charge the battery that was running it I could not light a flashlight bulb and maintain the voltage on the battery in other words, <laughs> the, uh, that's how close to efficient it was. In four hours, we dropped one hundredth of a volt on the battery in four hours running. So it, uh, it was getting damn close to efficient. But uh, according to the friend that was working with me, oh, it's, it's over efficient. We're 112. And I said, when that sucker will burn a light bulb sitting out there on a table with nothing going to it and the battery will not go down, then I'll say we have done it. That's my theory. Of course, I'm a little bit dumb on these things. And, uh, but I like to see something that's marketable that uh, you can take home and count on working. Anyhow, the, uh, uh, after we quit trying to do it Eklund's way, I uh, took all this investment and we looked at it and uh, 
done some experiments with resonance and took that same amount of iron, same rotor, and we was able to put it into resonance and then near killed me because it put out 30,000 volts at three amps. Okay. All right. We're back. Yep. Okay. Uh, is my volume up too high, or what do you think? I think it sounds good. Okay. Uh, it's interesting, the very last statement there, he's talking about, he doesn't want to say it, I can tell. He's talking about, they th they finally gave up on Eklund's design and decided to use it for a uh, uh, Tesla brand design, which is basically the the one that's called QEG nowadays. Right. Uh, it, basically, they, they, the core is very similar, uh, and the end plates are identical. And the rotor is slightly different, but uh, yeah, basically uh, he got uh, how many volts did he say? Last statement, um, three amps at fifteen thousand or twenty thousand or thirty thousand. Uh, thirty thousand. Like, uh, thirty thousand, wasn't it? Yeah, thirty thousand. And so uh, I often say forty kW, but it literally will put out uh, uh, forty thousand volts at uh, three amps, which is one hundred twenty kW. And and uh, we had a question come in on the chat last week. It says uh, on the home power system uh, that the handle surge is just fine. It'll surge. It'll handle a surge up to uh, one megawatt. Just so people know. Yeah, it handle surge is just fine. Um, and we've tested that as well. So that's a that's a, a, a thousand thousand. That's a million watts is what that is. Uh, it'll handle surges. And, and solar's rated in peak, you know. And so you could say the peak on this thing is a million watts. Of course, most people won't believe that because it's it's hard to believe. But uh, I've actually tested it and seen it and so on. Uh, and so when we call it 40 kW, I think that's what we can comfortably run it at and once you know once it's in mass production. All the you know all the all the testing's completed and everything. It, it's pretty well completed, but it needs to get in mass production, basically. Right. Um, and it, it's basically plenty for running any home, and you don't have to worry about surges or anything else, basically. Because the reason you don't is because the surge does not slow down the machine like a regular generator. If you put a regular generator on it, let's say it's rated at 2,000 watts, and you run it even 500 watts, every time you turn that 500 watt load, that whole thing sounds like it's going to die. Right. I, I, you know, I, I, yeah, I've seen them, enough of them to know that's the way it works. They, they really don't handle, you know, they may sur say surge 3,000 on a 2,000 watt generator. They don't do three, they won't do 2,000 surge. Uh, they, they're just lying. And, uh, you know, this, this particular one, again, he messed a lot with Eklund for some reason. Well, I think uh, well, I know what it was. There were several people that had donated to the ministry, and they wanted to see Eklund stuff happen. And so he worked real hard on it, and uh, so I did too. It wasted a lot of time on it. And so several of the other brothers still also wasted a huge amount of time on the Eklund designs. And in the end, we had to toss them out the window and uh, just go back to the, the one that Tesla and Brent had designed. And I think Tesla was the one that designed this, honestly. And this is the one that I took and made into the solid state hemisphere device also. In other words, they don't, you don't have to have rotating parts. Um, yeah, so, but the motor is pretty incredible. And he's eventually realized, we eventually realized that we could run it very fast. I think we had it up at, at 15,000 RPM, maybe even 20. And we, we could get a lot more than 10 horsepower. I think we decided to call it a 60 horsepower eventually uh, but it, we, we figured it would do peak 100 horsepower that little one that's the little one about wow. eight inches in diameter wow and about four inches thick and uh the big one that one would probably do two or three thousand horsepower um in that range wow wow um, yeah the uh so as, i was gonna say uh yeah. i thought it was <laughs> thought it was interesting that uh uh he was even back in 95 he was saying that uh he can increase the uh range of an electric car with these motors to two to four hundred miles and that's before you had all these fancy high-tech battery packs like are used in the tesla and all the hybrids these days uh you know those are those lithium-ion package packs are really dense storage and it's like you could probably well i mean if you're not considering that uh you'd run it in a mode that would be over unity uh 
the two to four hundred mile range was probably very conservative in today's standards of battery capacity. Yeah, well, I don't think batteries have gotten any better. Honestly, I think they've gotten worse since the '80s myself. But uh, and I'm I'm a battery guy. I test lots of batteries. But uh, that's because uh, you don't like you don't like it that these lithium ions are so delicate. They have all this yeah, well, stuff around them, and because just and to use junk. them. Yeah, I know what you mean. Junk, but, but anyway, uh, yeah. The uh, let me just tell everybody the best test we did. We, we can, you know, those those motors can be mass produced over Unity without dominant energy, hmm. except you will you will get some dominant energy coming in. Anytime you go over Unity, you will start getting dominant energy going in, and it's between four and ten times over Unity without dominant energy. Now, if you we did we did introduce the polar of the dominant energy into one of them. And we had that thing putting out uh, over a hundred, and it was one of the small ones. It was putting out over a hundred horsepower, with uh, about three watts going in. Wow! Just so people, uh, yeah, about three watts going in. Of course, we could have easily, you know, closed looped it, but uh, we didn't. We didn't. You know, Ron was afraid. He'd had a lot of persecution in his life. He was really afraid of uh, closed looping. He'd always say I was crazy when I do the demos on videos and put them up on YouTube and all that. You know, he. Him and all, most of the older brothers thought I was just crazy to do that, but the Lord was leading me to do that. So, uh, and we did get a lot of persecution. You know, lot, at one time I'd have two or three death attempts or murder attempts on my life every, every day, and uh, so, but you know, God delivers us out of all. You know, so uh, it doesn't bother me. So, but other people would worry themselves to death about it. Uh, in other words, they're worried about me. I, I tell them. Don't worry, you know. Jesus said, "Don't worry, quit worrying." And they'd say, uh, "Ron, Ron's one of them." He'd say, "Well, that's Jesus. That's easy for him to say." Well, he had to go to the cross. You know, he could have worried about that. He had to, he had to suffer and die. He could have worried about that. Uh, but you know, Bible says he never sinned, and he told us not to worry. So I, I would say that means he didn't worry as well. So uh, anyway, Ron was a great warrior, and uh, I think it, I think it overstressed him out, honestly. Uh, he, <laughs> Well, He's a world champion warrior. <laughs> well, yeah, I, no, I noticed that uh, you know even even in his talk there, uh, that's a, that was a I guess a public venue or more or less public. I guess people paid to go see that uh, little talk. Uh, but uh, you know he he wasn't really talking about over unity or dominant energy or any of that kind of stuff. And he, you know he says people had an aversion to talking about things that were over a hundred percent or or a hundred percent efficient. And yeah. uh, I also caught the little phrase, you know, he used uh, the supposed electrons that run through this. It's like, <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. I wonder if those people in that audience picked some of this stuff up. I mean, I wonder if they were, like, clued in on that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, anyway, uh, even Tesla said uh, electrons, uh, the concepts of how they teach electrons, he said something to the effect that you know, electrons are a big joke. The, the idea that, uh, that these are electrons <laughs> are going through these wires. Uh yeah, Tesla said something like that as well. But we do tend to call ordinary electricity electron, and yeah. we do tend to talk in those terms because that's what everybody talks, and you got to try to communicate with people as best you can, you know. Uh, so we try to use words, and that's why I try to use those words, you know. But again, I would say supposedly electrons as well because I, in reality, what they think of as electrons is is uh, non-existent in my opinion. And Ron's as well, and Tesla's as well. What they think of as electrons. Um, anyway, did uh, um, I was going to say? You know, you're talking about this uh, this style of motor, uh, and it can be mass produced. Is is that a pretty? Um, um, you know, could that be manufactured pretty cost effective? Because you know, the motor itself was fairly straightforward looking to me in the design. Uh, and of course, there's a controller there. Is the controller real sophisticated, or is it is it sort of standard like a uh, you know, somewhat standard, like a typical motor controller these days. The controller has to be built special, and not very many of them will hold up. Uh, now, in other words, the components you have to you have to trial and error the components every time because even the components that we used in the '90s, mid '90s, are not going to be the same now. Right. In other words, even the exact same part number will not behave the same, uh, and so you've got to trial and error to get the best components you can get. And I don't personally don't believe the components have improved much. Uh, we do have faster diodes, and that's good. But we did have instant recovery diodes in the later ones. I think around 2000, 2002, the one we got the horsepower way up on both those models. Um, we were using instant instant recovery diodes. So 
I, I, that, I don't think they made any improvements really on anything since then. Um, so we'll be dealing with, you know, if, if we, if, you know, if we have the funds, somebody wants to see this mass produced, uh, you know, make a donation and tell us that's what it's for, and uh, we'll do our best to get it in mass production. It's, uh, we'll take some serious money, but uh, you know, it's, if everybody works together, it's totally doable. Yeah, uh, these things can run your car, and literally, you don't one one battery on the hood of your car would be enough to go thousand miles. I mean, he's he's trying to say it real conservatively there. Um, and he doesn't want to also, he doesn't want to say anything get himself in trouble either because he's done that before. And he was actually, 20 years before this video, 20 years at least, maybe 30 years, he was demonstrating his totally self-powered electric car. And we did several of those under when Ron was a spokesman. And he demonstrated one of them. He used one of them for demonstration purposes. And the government was always after him. And he was always worried to death. I worried, you know, seriously worried about it. Uh, you know, and uh, they wanted to take, you know, they want to take the car is what they wanted, the government. And, of course, probably put him in jail, too, but uh, harass him for sure. And so he was actually living in hiding for a period of time over that car. And so that kind of decided at that point, he kind of decided at that point he was going to be very, very careful about talking about over unity or self-running ever again. Um, and uh, anyway, so he, he went through a lot of persecution. And, and uh, you know, we all have, so... Um, you know, but it's interesting stuff, and it is time. Nowadays, the persecution is almost gone, and very few people are dumb enough to think that it's impossible anymore. Everybody's been educated now, so almost everybody. And, uh, uh, yeah, so it's, it's now's the time, basically. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. So you, you're basically saying that, that that motor is, yeah, one battery would drive that motor, and that motor could drive a car. If, if the motor had, like, 50 or yeah. 100 horsepower, it'd easily drive a car. Yeah. Yeah, you step up the battery voltage to uh, uh, you know, the the little one. Uh, we had it as high as input voltage as high as 130 volts input voltage. The big one, I think it was even more. I think it was 200 or something. But anyway, yeah, you you take one battery, run it through an inverter, and rectify it, uh, and you're good to go. It doesn't take much amps. If, if you polarize it correctly. Now this is, again, this is the difference here. There's two different ways to do it. It looks identical. They both look identical. Uh, except if you polarize with dominant energy, yeah, you can run it with one battery. If you don't polarize dominant energy, if it's just running over unity because it's a real good motor, uh, then that one you're still going to need more amps going in. You're still going to need, uh, you know, 50 or 100 amps going in if you want to drive your car, you know. Uh, so in that case, your battery, yeah, your battery pack, you need a big battery pack, and you probably only go 400 miles or something like that, or 500 miles on, on your on a charge. Um, yeah. Okay. But, you know, there's also better solar panels available now. They can be put on your car, and uh, you can charge your car, you know, as you go. Uh, so that's another option as well. Yeah, but this, this motor is way more efficient. There's a number of people coming out claiming they got a brand new design that's better than ever. And uh, Sister Richie was nice enough to send me a few of those, and I watched them. And, and the Ron Brandt's motor, and you know the Ministry's motor from from Ron Brandt's time there, and the, built in the 80s and 90s, it was way better than even what they got now. Uh, and they've made some mistakes. They they've got a little bit better material, but they've made some mistakes on the ones they're doing now. That uh, so they they're probably not even over Unity on the ones they're doing now. If they are, they're only slightly over Unity. And uh, like I say, there are best tests on this one without polarizing it was probably, uh, so let's say, 600% for round numbers. Wow. Uh, so that would be like, you know, 1,000 watts in and uh, say 10 horsepower out, something like that. Wow. Um, that was our best test without, without going to dominant energy. With going to dominant energy, we had in one test about 3 watts going in and... Uh, I don't remember how many horsepower went out, but I'm thinking it was in the range of uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, somewhere in there. You know, there was three watts going in, and we were, I remember we messed up more than one pony brake by uh, by over, <laughs> over, uh, overdoing it. And these pony brakes, some of them were rated for 50 horsepower, and we would overdo them. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'd have to take the pony brake apart and repair it, basically. Wow. Uh, so, wow. So. Wow, wow, wow. You know that's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know the uh, it's, it just goes to show you how much uh, you know m <laughs> how much of 
we're just off track with uh, some of these hybrids and electric cars these day they, they, they are so over you know in many ways they're over engineered for what they're doing you know there's just so much complication in those automobiles uh, yeah they're trying to they're trying to make it complicated so they're trying to do it's uh and uh, he was also saying how the efficiency goes up with the RPM. It's about four times more efficient on this design. And he's also saying the horsepower really goes up with the RPM. About four times more efficient and four times more horsepower for double the RPM. Wow. Uh, so on this design. Uh, and that's without going to dominant energy. Without going to dominant energy, you can you basically draw on the same watts, but putting out four times more horsepower uh, as you would at a lower let's compare a thousand rpm to, to uh two thousand rpm so you double the horsepower you put out four times four times more watts mm -hmm. anyway something like that i want to read a comment here sister adrian richie says for these works that i do shall you do also and greater works than these that's a quote from jesus if the disciples of jesus are going to do greater works than jesus did then it seems very possible that the powers of the age to come will be granted to them to do these works amen 